Well, it has been a week. It has been a fun week. I have been having a good time. I hope you have been having a good time. We are going to continue the fun with one more coffee extract before we get to making. And I will tell you more about that extract in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. <laughs> How's it going, Sedzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for the fourth video this week and the last in our extracts for coffee before we get to the making. Now, we have done a coffee oil, so an extraction via oil, an infusion. We have done a coffee butter from that said infusion. And today, we are going to lean into the information I gave you during the benefits of coffee video when I was talking about whether water or oil extractions, all the things, and we're going to do both of those. So we're going to make coffee, kind of, and uh, we are also going to use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, to extract from the coffee bean as well. And we're going to talk about what you can use both of those, so the water extraction or the alcohol extraction for in your soaps and cosmetics. So let's get to the video. You can see a really cool uh, coffee pot thing in action, and it's just regular soda line glass. Also, would like to point that out, apropos of nothing, see soap making techniques and people being weird on that forum this week for more information, you know, there in the video. Okay, so we first up are going to make the most pretentious uh, pot of coffee that you have ever seen in your life. Is this necessary? Absolutely not. But was this fun when I found the thing? Absolutely. I was looking to do something kind of fun with like a pour over coffee, you know, thing for shooting of this video. And as I was looking for a pour over, I found this guy. And it's like a reverse gravity type coffee thing. And it was only 20 bucks and it's regular soda lime ash. And it requires like an alcohol burner underneath. And I thought, what fun is this going to be? Let's buy this best 20 bucks I've ever spent in my life. Let me tell you what, all for the video. But I will tell you that I did make coffee in this that we actually drank after all of this. And it was delightful. It's one of those, I wanna just sit and enjoy a nice cup of coffee moments with this little guy. So if you are in the, the market to get a pretentious little coffee pot, I highly recommend. It's a good time because this guy here, you know, I put the water in there and it's warming up. It's already very hot water. I poured it in after the, from the tea kettle and now it's heating up with the Bunsen burner, with the burner underneath. As soon as it starts bubbling, I am going to put this little guy on that I have all the coffee grounds inside. Make sure you grind everything really finely for your actual coffee, you know, solution for your lye solution. Cause that's what we're doing with all of this. And then I'm going to put it up there and somehow by magic, that filter that I put in the bottom with that chain thing, I don't know how any of it works. It's all going to go up to the top. It's magic. It's super pretentious. I do not make my coffee like this every day because uh, Mr. Soap and Clay and I go through probably three to four coffee pots of coffee daily, like actual full size pots. So that's not what's happening here, but it is very, very pretty. And so I definitely wanted to show it to you. Anyway, for this particular method, what we are going to be doing is roasted coffee and green coffee in place of the water in your lye solution. Wow, I'm just all over with the, the bouncy of the camera. Sorry, yeah, I'm learning how to be artistic with my shots. I'm not there yet. But anyway, so we are going to be doing a lye infusion, well, a lye solution, and using roast, we're going to be using coffee from the roasted or the green coffee for the water, 100% replacement. And we're gonna talk about it as we go because yes, you can make actual coffee out of green coffee beans. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do, but when, but it is possible. And I don't know why you would want to taste it because I did taste it and it's very bitter. But anyway, 
the point is you can use those. The easiest way to use coffee within your soaps is going to be with an infusion via your lye solution, so replacing the water. That is going to give you, as we have seen with the videos that we have done to this point, and really talked about all of the different methods with which you can use to extract all of the coffee goodness, a hot water, a boiling water, is going to be the best way. But boiling water, well, we can't put boiling water in a, in a body butter. You know what I mean? Because that's not a thing. We don't put water in our body butters. We can't use boiling water for all of our things, which is why we made the oils and the coffee butter and why we're also going to be making an alcohol infusion within this video as well. But for these purposes, just straight, brewed, beautiful coffee totally works. Now, for the caffeine uh, inclusion within coffee, I read, and I will link it below if I remember to refine it, that the coffee, the, the darker the roast, the more caffeine that exists. But that sort of doesn't make sense to me because the longer you roast it, the more of the oils and everything get kind of cooked out, but I guess it's because it gets lighter and lighter. And so if you're still putting in like half of a cup of your coffee grounds into your coffee pot, you're actually, it's more of the, I really don't know. I honestly cannot make that make sense in my mind, but apparently according to coffee people who know what they're talking about, you're going to be getting more caffeine from your darker roast. I don't know if that's true. If somebody else has more information on that, let me know or if you have a better way to explain it so it makes sense in my mind, also let me know in the comments. That would be great. Now for this, I am going to let the coffee cool down in this instance before I add the lye solution to it because it's already really hot. Coffee brews at a very, I mean, the water was boiling when this was doing its thing. And I want it to be back to room temperature before I put the lye solution in because remember, the lye does heat up. It is an exothermic reaction when it comes in contact with the actual, with the water, which with the H2O, because it's creating an unstable, you know, composition essentially. Like it's a very mad solution and it's not going to be not mad really until the fatty acids are introduced into the equation. So I will let this all cool down a lot until I am actually put the lye in it. But I will also be doing the same thing ish within the green coffee and show you the differences in the lye solutions, as well as, you know, kind of what you can expect from the green coffee too. But for the, these purposes, we've done coffee on the channel before, coffee lye solutions a number of times. You're not going to get any sort of scary things that are going to come from your coffee solution using, you know, with the lye in the, the coffee, because there's nothing that's going to really super react. You're also not going to get a big increase of your oils in this particular application because that coffee pot that I just showed you, it does have a filter. So it is going to be collecting any of the residual oils that will exist from the roasted coffee bean. Now remember, as we discussed in the earlier videos this week, the roasted coffee bean tends to have less oils than the green coffee bean anyway, because that is being cooked out during the roasting process. So with this, you're not going to be getting any excess oil. What you are going to be getting are your tannins. What you are going to be getting is your caffeine, your um, beautiful AHAs, and all of the jazz that we discussed in the first video of this with the benefits of coffee. As I said, I did let this cool down to room temperature before I included the lye solution in this because I don't want it to get overheated. Will the lye scorch? Uh, it's not going to scorch theoretically because there isn't... I mean, I guess technically there is like a simple sugar within coffee, but it's so slight because there's a carbohydrate that can exist through, but it's so slight that it doesn't really even count when you're looking at nutrition facts for brewed coffee. So my answer to that is no, there's really no sugars within it that would scorch, but it's going to be a very dark solution regardless. And you see all of that. Now let's go on to the green coffee lye solution. Okay, and I am going to do this a bit differently because I had zero desire to actually make a green coffee. It was not going to be a fun experience for me. And also, I, you saw what I did to my uh, to my coffee grinder with the green coffee. And so I did not want to do any of that again. And so this is a pretty roughly ground coffee, green coffee here, as well as I could get it with a broken uh, coffee grinder at the end of that video where I 
broke my grinder, really. And I am going to be putting in the same amount of coffee beans directly into the lye solution or into the water. Well, the lye solution, actually. No, I'm not doing that. I am such a liar. That's hot water that I put in. I'm going to use that to infuse. And then I'm going to put the lye, the actual lye into this coffee, green coffee water after it's cooled down. So with this, I am putting the same amount of coffee beans into it. And you can already see just with the, just with it sitting with the water, it is definitely extracting stuff. The water is turning colors. It's very, very oily, very hard to see within all that, but it is very oily. I let it cool down from the 180, 190 degrees that it was at from straight from the tea kettle to this in order to then put the lye solution, the lye into and create my lye solution. Now this is me just draining everything out and really mixing everything in. As I said, very oily. There is a lot of oil that is within this, this water. What does that mean? That means that your coffee or that you're in soap is going to be more super fatted. How much super fat? Not enough to matter in any applications. I can't give you an exact amount because that does require testing equipment that we don't have. Also why we don't do, you know, CO2 extractions at home all the jazz so but it's not going to be enough of a, a difference to need to you know adjust any of your light solutions or anything at all see how dark that is though you still have a lot of goodness coming from it so that's more proof positive that you're not just getting the coloring of the roasted coffee from this when you were doing extractions you're actually getting all of the good stuff too and so with this, I'm going to now pour it into and weigh out what I ended up with. I had weighed out the amount of water that I needed for my lye solution before putting it in. It was 12.54. And now after sitting with the cot with the green coffee, it's at 7.8. So I lost about five ounces of fluid through this process because those green coffee beans are soaking up the water. So that is something I would definitely pay attention to if you already, especially if you already soap at a water discount, because water discounts, again, it's like a one to one ratio or a one to 1.5 ratio. It can make your batter thicker than you expected if you do not have enough water in your solution. So I would highly recommend infusing it the way that I did, not just directly into the lye water and letting it do double duty, as you've seen me do many times before with teas and whatnot. I would recommend actually doing the infusion then weighing it out and making sure that you have enough water, adding more water to it if you need to, to make sure that you're hitting your appropriate water numbers so you don't end up with any surprises during your pour. And wow, oh wow, look how beautiful that lye solution is. It is absolutely stunning. It is also very oily. You will see just how oily when we use this for the, for the soap that it's going into. I'm not going to show you that today, but once it is cooled down completely and it is sat at room temperature, you will be able to see just how much oil actually came off of that. Also, I did not fully clean out my carafe before I put the water and the lice and the lye back in to create the solution, which means I will need to strain it again. I almost spilled that uh, in order to make my coffee. So that will be occurring as well. And the temperature for this one, just like the other one, sitting between 170 to 188 degrees. Let's check out the alcohol. <laughs> Okay, now, so on to the alcohol infusions. When I was talking about the ways that you can extract coffee, all of the goodness from the bean, in, I think, the first video, I did give you a graph and showed you, a, a, you know, essentially, a, a well, a research paper that was done talking about extracting coffee, all the goodness of coffee. And the best way they actually decided was chloroform or something, which was strange. We're not messing with that. But on the list, just as good, if not better than, were a lot of our alcohols, specifically, I think, methane. But I did some thinking and I thought, well, why not isopropyl alcohol? Will this not work? Will this not do the exact same thing? And knowing what we know about solvents within our mountain pour and how you can mix and match and substitute within your alcohols and to what extents, I decided let's try isopropyl alcohol at 99% and see what we get. And so I'm using the exact same amount of coffee within this infuser that I used to create to brew the coffee in the first place for the other two, as well as for the infusions for the coffee oil. And I'm using the alcohol. 
to see what happens. And as you can see, it immediately started getting dark. And because we know that the green coffee is also going to be releasing stuff because we just saw it with the, you know, whatever, this is going to be releasing all of the goodness and all of the awesomeness from your coffee as well. Now, this is three days later with an alcohol infusion. And yeah, it is cloudy. It is definitely no longer clear. You're not going to get a clear mountain pour if you decide to use this as a solvent. But what you are going to get is all of those tannins, all of those, all that caffeine, all of the beautiful things that we talked about with the benefits of, you know, the, the coffee topically in your mountain pour via your solvent, something that you have to put into your recipe in order to create a melt and pour base in the first place. And so that's pretty cool. And so aside from that, though, do you guys have other ideas, other ways that we could uh, incorporate this? I already have ideas and I've already made them and I'm super excited to tell you about them and show you the products and everything that I made. But what else can you do with an alcohol infusion of coffee? What other products can you make? I'm really interested in your answers and everything. So definitely talk about them in the comments. That would be awesome. We are going to turn this into a couple things. One of them will be a melt and pour base, which is going to be delightful. I can't wait to show that to you. We have some other stuff too. And all of that sediment there, you can really see very, very thick. I'm definitely going to put my finger in there to show you. It's very oily. We have a lot of interesting stuff going on. This was a very effective means of extracting all the goodness from the coffee. And again, as I said, we are going to test it in some really cool products. And also to that, there is going to be a question. And the answer to that is yes, you can use glycerin for the same thing. I will be showing you how to extract via glycerin when we do the mountain pour video. That will be coming up in a week after next, I believe. So definitely stay tuned for that. But for now, there's a whole bunch of awesome infusions with coffee. So are you really, really excited for the green coffee extraction, the lye solution that I created? You dying to see that in action? Didn't it turn such a gorgeous color? It's wild, it's wild. And also, as you can see with the alcohol extractions are completely fine and they're actually extracting stuff. So we're gonna use that for things in the upcoming weeks. So definitely subscribe, comment, like all the things so you can be notified when I am going to be making all this stuff. If you haven't got your extracts and everything ready to go yet, your infusions, your butters, all of the things, go do that this weekend. We'll be back on Monday. As I said before, we're going to be doing weekly, four times a week content. So Monday through Thursday is going to be the idea. So I'll be back on Monday and we're going to start turning all of these awesome coffee infused batches of goodness into some batches of goodness soap. Sudzers, thank you for being here. Thank you for existing. Thank you for being all of the things. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you have an amazing weekend and it's not too cold where you are. I know a lot of you are getting a lot of cold right now. Me too. Me too. But... Either way, we will be back on Monday for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.